I hope you're doing well. Today's video is going to be a tutorial, which I I feel like I haven't filled one in a while. And I really wanted to make a snail mail, like happy mail, flap mail flip book, which I haven't done in so long. Um, the, I used to make these all the time and I had so much fun and I kind of missed it. So today I was like, yeah, I'm gonna make one. Um, I thought, why not film it? And I'm using a mix of Marigold and Fresh Bouquet by Crate Paper. And I think this turned out so cute. This video, well, this tutorial will be up in two parts because um, you don't want to see me decorating this for an hour, right? So today I'm going to show you how to create the base of this really flat flipbook. And in my next video, which is going to be part two, um, I'll show you how I decorate this and yeah I think this turned out super cute it is still really flat but there's nothing inside yet so there's nothing inside the pockets there's no letter there are no goodies so once you add a couple of bits it will be a little bit chunkier but I was trying to keep this as flat as possible so if you want to see how I made this then keep on watching so let's start today's tutorial um, so I'm playing with a mix of Marigold by Maggie Holmes and Crate Paper Fresh Bouquet because they're really pretty collections and I think they go really well together. So um, I don't really have any like sizes in mind. I just have this cut apart here from, I believe this is Marigold um, and I wanted to use this as a tuck spot so I'm going to try to keep it this height. So, got a couple of tools here, papers, and I'm just gonna start cutting. So, yeah, as I've said, no measurements, just, um, you know, what I have on my desk here. So, I picked these three papers because I think they're really pretty. They're pink, black and white, and I think they would go well with this. So, this I wanted to be my outside cover because I think that's really easy to decorate. So, I'm just gonna trim this branding strip off and then I'm just gonna measure this cut apart this is just under six inches so my flip book will be six inches long and I'm just going to cut all of my papers all right so we have our three pieces here so they're currently six by twelve I don't think I want my flip book to be six inches um wide because I think that's a little bit too much but what I do want is I want to be able to fold some of these sides over to create tuck spots so I'm just gonna think about the width I think five inches four and a half inches I think four and a half inches is a really nice width for my flip books so I'm gonna switch this blade to my scoring tool and I'm gonna score this at four and a half inches because I don't think I want a tuck spot at the beginning do I want one no I'm just thinking and also this paper has hearts on the other side so I want to make sure I use the right size do I want something here I think I do actually so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna I don't even know what I'm doing here. So I'm going to score this at four and a half inches. Because I like that width. Um, didn't score properly. It's not the best tool to use to score paper. I don't actually have a proper scoring board. So I'm just using that. Um, I'm going to score it four and a half inches from this last one. So I know that's like the middle. If that makes sense. Like here, and then I'm just gonna fold it over to see how big my tuck spot is because I think this is a little bit too much. So I think now I'm thinking: should I do I want like a triangle? Do I want to cut this off? I think I want to cut this off. Um, so I'm just gonna switch to my blade again and just kind of cut it. I really hope you can see what I'm doing here. Um, so I'm just going to trim it from this corner to the fold on the top here. 
to create like a little triangle. It's really hard to see it. Something like this. So when you open it, you can tuck something in here, which I think is really nice. So I'm going to think about the order of my papers. So when you open it up, I think I want to have this one here because I think that looks really nice. And then probably this one. So we have all the pinks on this side and then you open it up and you always have like a black and white page here. And in the middle, I don't mind that it's really colorful because I'm actually going to use some vellum, I think, and maybe some other pink cardstock that I have here. So now I'm thinking, do I want any more tuck spots? Um, and also, I haven't made this one before, so I'm just like, you know, making it as I go. Um, but yeah, I thought it would be fun to film an, um, like a flip book tutorial because I used to love making these and I haven't made them in a while and I kind of miss it. I do like my 3D projects, but I also really like this because this is what I started with. So with this pink one, I think I want like a tuck spot on this side. So I'm going to score it here at four and a half inches again. And I just cut it. Oh, okay. Um, so this wasn't supposed to happen. I used the wrong blade. So what am I going to do now? I think I'll still use it. I'll just have like a shorter page on one side. Oh, this is always something that happens on camera, um, which is kind of annoying. Okay, so I need to improvise now. So I still want this here. So I'm still going to do four and a half inches. Making sure I've got the correct um, tool in my trimmer. Oh my god, this is so embarrassing. And I also just like ripped this. It's turning into a big fail. So it's fine. So I want this here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a pocket with some normal pink paper on this side. I'll show you how I do that in a bit. But now I can do what I wanted to do on this page here. So I'll do four and a half again. And I'm just gonna flip it around because it's easier to see. I'll do four and a half inches again. And then I'm going to trim off a little bit from this side because this is going to be my flap and I don't want it to be that big. I think I wanted it to be this size. And I'm actually gonna use um, a border punch because I like having these corners a little bit, you know, different. I don't want them to be all straight and boring. I miss making these flip books so much. I've been thinking about making one for a while now. And today I was like, yep, I'm gonna sit down and make a flip book. Good old times. So, um, so it's a little, this is like a really awful tutorial. I'm really sorry about that, but I hope you still kind of understand what I'm doing here. So, this is the front. We have a little tuck spot here. This page. Um, I'm going to put some vellum on this side or maybe some pink. This is another little pocket. Okay, so now I'm gonna think about this messed up side here. I still have my cutter part here that I wanted to use as a um, like tuck spot. So maybe I can use this as a pocket instead. Now I'm improvising because I messed up my flip book. So I think this would look really cool on this side. I, can, I could layer something here. If I just glue this down and then add another full piece on the other side just to decorate it. I think that would look really cool. So what I'm going to do now, before I do anything else, I'm going to assemble this. So I don't need my trim thingy for a while. So I have prepared a little needle and some just simple yarn. And I'm actually going to try to put this together, which I'm sure I'm going to fail something because I'm filming. So I've got some um, 
binder clips here and I'm just gonna put it together so I can kind of hold it and I think I'm gonna have three holes in here so I'm gonna use the scuttle to um, punch those holes is this little tool from Sizzix is actually for your dies so I'm just gonna eyeball it it doesn't have to be perfect because it's handmade and that's the um, beauty of these things I think like, I don't want this to look store bought because I did not buy this in a store I made this by hand so I want it to look like that as well so I'm just gonna Kind of saw this. Sorry if you hear noise. Um, there's always some kind of noise in the background, all the time. Okay, and now I can just tie a knot on this side, and I'm done with sewing. Just to hold this together. Oh, it kind of got stuck in my ring. Here we go. Okay, I'm just gonna trim this off. Right. Okay, so this basic booklet is done. So now I can just glue those little bits together. So I'm just gonna use some red line tape because I want it to be, I don't want it to fall apart when I send it to my friend. So we got these pages, this one, then we have a little tuck spot here just going to use a little bit more this red line tape just a little bit to hold it together and then I can um, put my letter into one of these little tuck spots which I think is really cool and interesting makes it really fun to open your mail when you get something like this my cat was on my desk not long ago and he actually lay down and I thought, oh, cute, he's going to be on my table while I craft, but he disappeared. Um, isn't that a surprise? So on this side, I wanted this and I think that looks so cute and I'm actually just going to stick this down here. Oh, I think he might be on. There he is. Hi, Lexi. And he just jumped to his chest on top of my shelf because he loves doing that. Okay, so now I just want to see where I need to put my tape. Hope this makes sense. If you want to recreate this. I'm actually just going to use a pencil. Because why not? Okay, so now I know I can cover this with tape. I'm actually just gonna use red line tape again because I have it next to me. Okay, so that took way longer than expected. I hate peeling off the backing of these red line tapes. So now I'm just gonna try to line it up here and stick it together. I think that looks cute. You'll never know that I messed up in the first place. So now I have a little bit of um, a pink cardstock here, which I've already um, trimmed to six inches and this is four and a half inches. And I've got this fold here and I thought, what did I think? Am I gonna make a little pocket? I think I might actually create a little pocket because I don't have a pocket here. But I could create a little pocket here, maybe over here, what do you think? And then I can just stick this down here, okay, um, so I'm not going to use this. Actually, I have this piece here next to me, which is a little bit dirty, this paper came with it, and I'm actually going to use this for my little pocket. So I don't have to waste more of that pink paper. So I'm just going to trim off this dirty bit and then just use it. So it's a good way of using like scraps. And now I'm going to use my little border punch again because I love this tool. And it just makes everything look so cute. 
and I get a lot of questions about oh hi cat he decided to leave me um, I get a lot of questions about where I got my border punch from and I actually got this from a local store in London um it's from X cuts I think but yeah I don't know what it's called it's just called border punch I don't know where you can buy it from sorry um so now I'm just going to add a little bit of tape to these three sides here okay um sorry if you can hear any noise in the background for some reason my neighbors just decided to start hammering and they always seem to make noise when I try to do something, which is so annoying. Um, so yeah, you might be able to hear that hammering. I'm very, very sorry about that. Um, so let's look at this again. So we have a little tuck spot here. This is blank, so I can decorate this. These pages, there's a tuck spot here. This I'm gonna decorate. This is just a normal page. Another little tuck spot here, which I'm going to decorate this page. And this is it. So for the closure bit, I really wanted to use this seam binding because it's so beautiful. And I thought I could just punch a little hole in here, have an eyelet through there so my ribbon can go through it. And then I can just tie it together at the front. So I'm going to do that right now. Have my cropper dial here. And I'm just going to eyeball the center. It's probably not in the middle, but who cares? And let's pick an eyelet. I think I'm just going to go for gold. Actually, no. I will go for one of these pink ones because they're so pretty. Because I thought it would be really cool to be able to close it with one of these pretty seam bindings I got so this is the base done I think it turned out really cute I cannot wait to decorate this which is gonna take me ages because I always take so long decorating these things I'm just gonna put that seam binding through here and see what that looks like because that will be the last bit of this video and I'm gonna have a separate video up on my channel if you want to see how I decorate this um flip book because that normally takes me quite a while <laughs> so i thought i i don't want to bore you with like 50 minute video because even if i speed it up the decorating bit always takes so long so yeah i don't i, I don't want to do that to you um let me just tie this together Okay, I made a really awful bow, but you kind of get what I wanted to do here. So it's still really, really flat. I think once I decorate it, it will be a little bit chunkier, especially if I fill it up with goodies. I'm trying not to use any chipboard. And if I do, I will take off, you know, the layers just to make it less chunky. But this is it. Just a very simple flat mail flipbook for your pen pals. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in my next video where I decorate this beauty. Bye!